This is Real Life Solutions with Uncle T. Hey, you know what? <clears throat> I'm out here hanging out at the park. You know what I'm saying? It's a beautiful day today. The park is crowded. Enjoying myself, man, you know. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go up here to the park, chill out, shoot a couple videos, you know what I'm saying? And just hanging out, just seeing what's up, you know what I'm saying? But I wanted to talk to y'all today about something that's... Uh, <laughs> That's really dear to me, but you know, I, I I know a couple of people who are going through this this situation right here. Is that I want to talk to y'all about the nasty, low down, dirty truth about the four stages of an marital affair. How many of y'all know who, who have already done it, have already had a marital affair, or already uh, been through it, done that? You know, and uh, got the T-shirt. But you know what, though, one of the things that being married 33 years, and one of the things that I understand that over the years, marriage is work. Marriage is work. Marriage is. Um, people think that marriage is just I get a ring, we 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 lovey dovey, we unicorns and. Uh, birds chirping in the air uh, rainbows and skittles but people don't realize that marriage is work and you talk to anybody who has got some time in that that's put in 15 20 25 plus years in a relationship in a marriage they will tell you marriage is work it is nothing fun all the time it is not glamorous all the time it is not like you see on the reality tv shows i fix my glass my glasses falling off it is not like it is on the tv shows to where marriage is just so perfect everything is just polished and everybody gets along and it's the greatest thing that ever happened marriage can be a great thing but most of the young couples that i see today they're not ready for marriage because I look at all this, a lot of videos out here of the modern woman and these women talking about, well, uh, if, if a man gonna be with me, he gotta pay, he gotta pay all the bills. And, and when I work my job and my career, all my money is my money. And he got to be, if he wanna be with me, he gotta take care of me. He gotta make sure my nails are done, my hair are done, blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, and. He got to make sure my kids are taken care of and the kids are half the time are not his. And he got to take care of somebody else's kids. And you were giving him all these demands as to what he needs to do. And when it comes to marriage, I'm going to tell you something. Marriage is compromise. And a lot of time people are not willing to compromise when it comes to marriage because pride get in the way because everybody wants to win the argument. Um, everybody wants to win the fight. And a lot of times people do not want to lose. And a lot of times, like I said, pride gets into the way. But as we talk about the four stages of a marital affair. And I know a lot of people who have had marital affairs and you may know somebody who doing it right now. And when I get done with this video, you might be saying, hey, you need to check this out. You need to check this out because T was, T was kicking some knowledge. Now, stage one, there are four stages. Stage one. Stage one is the compromise. That's the first stage, stage one because the person who is having the affair, right? The person who is having the affair, um, they become more interested in talking, spending time with the other person. Um, and this is all as a distraction to their own emptiness. And what I mean by that, people are empty. The reason why a lot of time people have affairs, they looking for something. And I'm not saying that everybody who has an affair, and I'm not saying that it's right, and I'm not saying that, that you should have an affair, 
if you're not getting what you need from your partner. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is a lot of times people are empty. They are looking for something from their partner that their partner can't give or don't want to give. If you need more affection, if your partner says, kiss my ass, I'm not giving no affection, I'm, I'm not doing anything else, I'm not doing nothing. A lot of times, if you have a need for affection and you got another woman who's saying, who's very affectionate and want to give you an affection, you're going to be attracted to her. You're going to be very attracted to her because she's giving you and feeding you with a need that you have. And I'm not saying, I know y'all are looking at me saying, well, T, I don't know about that. I don't agree with all that you're saying because we all have needs, but that don't mean we go cheap. And I agree. That don't mean we go cheap because we have needs. We suck it up and be a, uh, be grown folks about it. And we go talk to our partner. I'm just saying that sometimes you can talk to your partner and tell your partner what you need and it and your partner doesn't respond. Your partner doesn't see that it's, an, it, that it's an important part of you. Your partner doesn't see that this is a need for you. Sometimes your partner may have a need. Your partner may not want to supply it. But a lot of times your partner has a need and somehow they will step out to get that need fulfilled. Doesn't mean that they love that person. They longing they have a longing for something and like I said before it doesn't mean it doesn't give you permission to go cheat because you lacking something many couples who been married and been married for some time we all lack something but that don't mean I'm gonna go lay in the bed with another woman don't mean she gonna go lay in the bed with another man we try to talk about it we try to work it out and we go through things and we we, we dialogue about it now, that's that emptiness I'm talking about. Now, stats, statistics show that an affair is the most common with someone they work with, a uh, an old friend, or an old uh, a old fling that they used to having you know uh, a fling that they used to let's say an old girlfriend, an old boyfriend. That's usually what it is. They uh, they sense an attraction to the other person, right? They sense an attraction to the other person. And if they reciprocate the attraction, it only deepens. Now, if you got an attraction for another guy and he feeding you and he feeding you that emptiness, he telling you how good you look because your man don't tell you. He telling you, you so smell good today. Your man don't tell you. Your hair looks nice. Did you get a new hairstyle this weekend? I like that. That looks good on you. Your man don't tell you that. He feeding that emptiness. He feeding that. And a lot of times when the other person reciprocate that, the attraction deepens. They take extra time. And once that is reciprocated, they 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 take the time to smell good they look good they look desirable um they look very attractive before meeting the friend or the acquaintance uh, they make sure that everything is in place they 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 that's what they do they making sure they look good for their partner that they're getting ready to hook up with right they they making sure that also, they're thinking um, they're thinking more about this person. They're bordering uh, obsessive thinking. Once they once I'm gonna tell you something. I like spiritual warfare because these are the traps that Satan set for you. Now, this person tapped into something this other person was not getting. Right? They tapped into something that they were not getting. Now. This person, they they revved up, they ready to go, they smelling good, they looking good. This person is taking an interest in me, okay? Now, they are bordering and obsessive thinking. Now, 
their mind just racing right now. They're, they, 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 they enjoy this. They enjoy the attention that they're getting, anticipating the next time they see this person, right? You know, they, you know, they may begin manipulating circumstances or events, you know, with the other person to be with them more often. Uh, they may uh, manipulate, uh, you know, I'm going over here. Uh, I don't want to see you today. Or they may tell their partner, I don't want to see you today. Uh, I'm, I got something to do. Or, or, you know, I'm going over here. I'm going, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And uh, start rearranging, making new plans. Uh, that's how they manipulate the situation. And to be with the other person. So this is all a part of stage one. Also in stage one, you have flirting. You know, they're playful. You know how people are very playful when they flirt, they tease in the conversations between them. It seems innocent, right? It seems very innocent. Uh, it seems like there ain't no big deal. You know, they always playful, joking around and whatnot. Um, but this is how the little compromises begin. Uh, that eventually the married person moves closer to the affair. Let's say if it's a man who's attractive to a woman, she may flirt with him. She may look at him, say little things, blow little kisses to him, wink her eye at him, you know. She may throw that booty out at him. She may twerk at him. You know, she may twerk a little bit or something, try to show what she's working with. You know, little things, little compromises that he likes that he liked that it may be little things a guy may do the guy may he may look at her and wink at her and be like i'm gonna crush it i'm gonna smack i'm gonna smash it you know i'm gonna smash it when i get my hands on it you know you ain't gonna be able to get out of this these vice grips you know saying little stuff and she like <laughs> yeah 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 Okay, you see, this is what moves the relationship further and further from, from point one to point B to point C. Now, can you see the satanic plan in all this? Can you see how the enemy is working this all out to get you trapped off? Can you see that? Can you see the spiritual warfare behind this? Now, we're still in stage one, right? We're still in stage one. Now, they're most likely not verbalizing to anybody about you. You can't afford to because we don't want to let the kid out of the bag when we are having an affair. We don't want to let the kid out of the bag, especially when people at work know your people. They may know your wife. They know, may know family members that may work at the same place. Now, but fantasizing with the idea of being unfaithful. Now they fantasizing with the whole issue, right? They fantasizing with the whole issue that they ain't saying nothing, but they fantasizing about what's it going to be like to be with you. She is so fine. I can't wait to be with her. She is so daggone fine. She fantasizing about being with him. She ain't thinking about nothing else. She thinking about, God, he is so good looking. I can't wait. If she's the one who's married and having an affair, she can't wait. And she's fantasizing, wow, what's it going to be like to be with him? I can't wait till we get a room and go get together, right? Now, others may recognize something is off, right? Because all of a sudden, you bringing this person biscuits. You bringing breakfast. You going by and picking up lunch. Now, other co-workers might be like, man, we've been here five years. We done known you for five years. You ain't never bought us lunch. You ain't never bought us in a biscuit from Bojangles. You ain't never bought us a biscuit. Now, this girl ain't been here for six months, and now you bringing her biscuits, getting her lunch. They recognize something is off. They recognize that you doing special little, little things for this person, right? Now, a married person or a person who's having the affair will get defensive. And they'll say, well, you know, we're just friends. Y'all tripping. Y'all be seeing too much. 
into this. We now, you know, y'all tripping. We just friends. I don't know why y'all mad because I bring y'all something to eat tomorrow. Since y'all feel that way and getting all jealous and everything, I bring y'all something to eat tomorrow. Now that's what the uh, the person who is having the affair, that's what they would actually tell uh, the coworker, right? Now, as we know, all a part of stage one, we still in stage one, that these are the little steps of compromise that progress. Just little steps. Now, the person who is having the affair will justify their own behavior. They'll find excuses and behaviors that they never thought they would cross. Now, that's just like someone who, you know how a person is when you first get married, how you are faithful, you are all about the marriage, you in love with your spouse and whatnot. You would have never thought that the day you got married that you would cross any line, cheat on that person, hurt that person, or sleep with another man or a woman. Now, that's something that you never thought that you would do, okay? Now, this at this point, these the person is having an affair and they find that their excuses to continue the behavior that they wouldn't cross, right? This is how normally a good person eventually falls into the trap because they start with one compromise and another and then another until you so far out there that now you've compromised everything. You've compromised the relationship. You compromise everything. And that's how a lot of times a good person will get caught out there and they don't realize uh, a lot of the things that they do, they're just jeopardizing everything about themselves. Now we're going into stage two. Stage two is crossing the line, the stage of secrecy, okay? Stage two is crossing the line crossing the line of secrecy, okay? At this stage, they're feeling in love. They ain't falling in love, they are in love, okay? Affairs usually last anywhere between six to 18 months, right? Sometimes three years. Now, the average affair lasts anywhere between six to 12 months. This is why it's better to work on your marriage or just get a divorce and find someone new. Because why go through all that drama for six to 18 months, three years, secrecy, cheating, hotel rooms, hanging out of her house, trying not to be seen by nobody. Man, that's a lot of pressure. That is a lot of pressure. So it, it, either you work on your marriage, just get a divorce, find you somebody new so you don't have to you could just let the veil down and be like okay i'm divorced i can be seen who i want to be seen with i can talk to who i want to talk to and i don't have to deal with you know being hiding hiding and going on i don't have to do that no more you know and all a part of stage two stage two they begin to meet in secret locations. They feel alive, you know. You know, people meet in secret locations. They'll meet at parks. They'll meet at the hotel. They'll meet at a restaurant that may be out of town. So they know you're not going to be there. Or they may not. The chances of running into somebody that they know, it won't happen. Because they're going to be so far two or three cities out of town that the odds of that happening are slim and none. You know, and they feel so alive that the other person finds them so desirable and wanted that that it's just like pouring gasoline onto a passion and striking a match and it just whoosh, it, they, they feel so alive. They say they feel so alive that this is all taking place. And deep down inside, they know it's wrong. 
but they suppress all those guilty feelings because I, I enjoy this feeling I'm getting. I enjoy this. I like this feeling that I'm getting and I can't give it up. I enjoy this. I, I like the way she makes me feel. I like the way he makes me feel and I know it's wrong. I know I have another mate, but I can't give it up because I really like how it makes me feel. They're not willing to give up these feelings the, these little compromises that they make still at work to take the married spouse further and further and further away from their current spouse and attach affection to the affair partner. Okay, let me say that again. They continue on and on and on till they make little compromises the affection and the love that he has for his mate or her mate, they now attach that love and affection to the new person. So it's a transfer of affection, a transfer of affection that people do not realize that take place. Now, that affection comes with a lot of consequences. The next stage is stage three. The affair is like an addiction. It's like the person is on drugs. I mean, they act like they on meth. They high on crack or something because they are just on cloud nine. They on cloud nine and they are just like their own drugs. And the affair is like a dopamine high is that the the that what i mean by that is just that the affair resembles an addiction that their life has become unmanageable you know trying to juggle the secrets and the lies that they have the they have the inability to stop on their own no matter how hard they try they can't they can't stop because they are so in love with the addiction. And it's almost like getting high on crack for the first time. And they say when a person smokes crack for the first time, that their brain releases a hormone. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of the hormone now, but it just slips in my mind. Um, that the body releases all the hormones from the brain that makes you feel good and it empties the whole entire brain of that uh, hormone and when it hits the bloodstream they said that that's the best high a person can ever have in their life and what happens is a person who smokes crack they continue to try to get that high again and they don't realize they'll never ever get it again because it was a one-time thing that you'll never get that high uh, ever again. So therefore, they are like on a dopamine high and they cannot come off of that high. So at that stage four, that when the affair has ended and has fizzled out, you have to decide whether you're gonna move forward in recovery with your spouse or risk the chance and stay with uh, your affair partner doing so this means giving up everything in your uh, life as you know it so you got to make some decisions when you're having an affair because when an affair gets to a certain point and you're ready to tip out and do your thing at some point, that affair is going to grow. People's emotions are going to grow. Unless you just hard like that. Unless y'all got an arrangement. You know, unless you and the woman has an arrangement. And she know, this is it. We ain't falling in love. This is just an arrangement. This is just about relations. Uh, when you want me, I'll be there. I want you, you know, vice versa. This is about affection. But this ain't about us getting married. Me leaving my spouse. 
It ain't nothing like that. So, and people have those type of arrangements. So, if you are having an affair, you have to come to a point to where you got to come up. You got to talk about these things. You know, what what are we doing? Am I going to leave my spouse? Are you going to leave your friend, your boyfriend, or your girlfriend? What's what's the deal? These are things you need to talk about in the very beginning before your emotions get all tied up. Because a lot of times when your emotions get all tied up, man, all kinds of things can happen and take place. Now, we have the last stage, stage four. Statistics say that for marriages lasting, that started out as an affair, right? People who had affairs and get try to get married started out as an affair aren't good. I mean, the stats are bad. People who cheat are two to three times more likely to cheat in the next relationship. That's why <laughs> that's why don't be mad at your old boyfriend who left you and he was somebody else and you can't stand the girl and you mad and all this and then that. Trust me. If he was cheating on you, he gonna cheat on her. If she was cheating on him, she gonna cheat on she gonna cheat on her new man. He just ain't gonna find out about it. He ain't gonna find out about it. Trust me. She gonna cover her tracks. She he is never gonna find out about it because we know women are the best cheaters ever. Women, men, you think you are the best cheaters? Nah, you ain't nothing. Men, you 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 got the you got the game all mixed up. Women are the best cheaters ever. Let me tell you a story. This this happened. This woman was so good that she cheated. She, let's just say today she went to cheat today. Today is Sunday. She went to cheat today. She went to Walmart on Saturday, yesterday. She went to Walmart, bought something she needed, she was cooking with. She went to Walmart, bought it on Saturday, got the receipt, got the bag. She put it in the trunk of the car. Come Sunday, she knew the guy who she gonna cheat with, she had a time frame she had to be there to do they do, right? She tells her boyfriend, I'll be back in a little bit. I gotta go to Walmart, pick up some stuff. I'll be right back. I gotta do this, 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 okay? She been gone for a couple of hours. He comes back, she comes back home. He questions her and say, where you been? You ain't answered your phone. Uh, where you been? I mean, you've been gone four hours. I told you I had to go to Walmart. I told you, here's the bag. I had to go get this. Now she comes in with a receipt, a Walmart bag, and a product. In his mind, since she's got a Walmart bag, stuff in the bag, and a receipt, he thinks she just went to Walmart and she was at Walmart running around. Never in his mind he ever thought she got that bag yesterday. If he had looked at the receipt, he would have saw that that receipt's from yesterday. That's not a receipt that she just went to the store. And he found out later that she was cheating. But this is how smooth women can be. This is how smooth. Now, I have to give credit for that. That was smooth. That was smooth. That you play this thing off by going to the Walmart and get bags and and get grocery or whatever, you know, whatever feminine products or whatever the day prior so that you can get out of the house the next day and tell him you got to go to Walmart. And technically, you went to meet your homie. You went to meet your boyfriend and go do your dirt and then come back home that's 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 something man i mean that's something that is really something but we knew we i, I always knew that that a, a person who cheats with one person will always cheat when they get with somebody else so don't be fooled to think that they walk in the straight and narrow they straighten they act up now they goody good shoes no they they still cheating or they or they too old to cheat and nobody don't want them 
but if they're still young, still look good, they're going to cheat. Trust me. They're going to cheat. Do Some people say, hey, I don't want to restore anything. I really enjoy being out there. I really enjoyed meeting other people. I really enjoyed having sex with SEX. Let me rephrase that so I don't get uh, banned. Uh, I enjoy SEX and with another woman. I enjoy SEX with another man. And I don't think I want to be married anymore. I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. it. It bought me a lot of pleasure. And I realized that's what I like to do. And if that's if that's you, I mean, be man and woman enough to just say that. Don't string nobody along. You know, because in stage four, we got to understand one thing is that affairs almost end, or always end. Research shows the two three percent last into long term relationships. Only a two to three percent only last into long term relationships. So go further. So to go further, due to the delusion that they have. The foundation is based on secrets and lies. Think about it. The whole relationship, the reason why that number is so small is your whole relationship was based on lies and secrets. You started out telling lies. You started out telling secrets. If it wasn't such a big secret, you know, you would have been together you know, everybody would have known about it. It wouldn't have been kept a secret, you know, but that's the foundation. Less than 10%, I'm telling y'all, less than 10% of affair partners will eventually marry. And when they do, 85 to 95% of those marriages end in divorce. 85 to 95% end in divorce. So when they cheating on one partner, they marry somebody else, they cheat. And this person who they cheat with and get the person that's receiving the, the cheater somehow thinks that they're going to stop. And it's always the other person treated me so bad. That's how, that's the reason why I cheated. And then when they get with the new person, they think they're going to change. Let me tell y'all women something. You can't change a man. I don't care how good your loving is. I don't care how fine you are. You can be the girl with the pretty hair, the green eyes. You can have a Coke bottle shape. I don't care who you think you are and how good you are in the bed. If a man gonna cheat, he gonna cheat. You can't change a man. I done been around men my whole life from 18 to now. Military working in penitentiaries all my life. A man ain't gonna change unless he wanna change. So I don't know what's wrong why these delusional women who think they're gonna change a man because they think that you don't got a BBL and you twerking and you bouncing and going on in front of his face and you think, oh, you think, oh, he gonna say, ooh, I'ma change, I'ma change. Look at that BBL, I'ma change, ooh, she is fine, I'ma change. No, he ain't gonna change. He'll change if he want to. If you are important to that man, he'll change. If you are not important to him, he won't change. He'll change when he feel like changing. And he's going to have to see something that's going to require him to change. He's going to have to see something he's going to lose or something he's going to gain for him to change. And this is why when it comes to having marital affairs, this is why I'm against young people when you're 17, 18, 19 years old and want to get married. And I'm not saying you don't love each other, but people change. What you may need it as a 19 year old, you may not need as a 23 year old. The guy, you know, when you are 19 and 20 years old, you may feel a certain way there is a chance that you can grow out of relationships. It doesn't mean that you don't love the person, but my needs as a 19 year old may be different by the time I turn 26. I may not need that because a lot of times people get married and you don't realize that people change in relationships. 
that you think that they're the same person when the day you said I do because nobody ever told me that your spouse would change. You would change. As you grow older, there are things that you don't like anymore. There are things that you don't care for anymore. Places you don't care to go anymore. Um, there are needs that you need more of and less of. Nobody tells you about these things. And then you wonder why when you get married so young and then when the guy don't understand why his girl don't see him attractive when he was 19, now you're 24, she don't find you attractive anymore because her needs change. Her taste buds change. <laughs> Same thing, vice versa for the woman. Same thing. But I hope, I hope something that I said triggered something about this thing with the marital affair because there are plenty of people who've been to been through marital affairs and did not understand why things happen you see these talk shows with um with um with steve and um you used to see it with maury and all these other shows to where the guy cheated the woman cheated and you know they always ask the question how could you do this to me? And I want to say so bad because either he's a dog or she's a dog that they are trifling or there is something somebody had a need for and it wasn't being fulfilled and somebody came along and fulfilled that need and now Jody got your girl or Jody got your man because you didn't see it coming. You didn't see it coming at all. It hit you by blindside, it hit you blindsided. And now Jody got your, your man and you wondering what just happened. Such and such got your girl, your homeboy got your girl and he been sleeping with your girl and you never saw it happen. You never saw your girl, you never put two and two together until it was all done and then and you start wondering, okay, that's why old boy was wanting to hang out at the house all the time. That's why he was always on her side when we got in an argument all the time because he was doing the dirt. Mm-hmm. You never saw that. But like I said before, I don't think that a person who cheats, there's never a reason to cheat. If you just don't want to be with the person anymore, just say, look, I don't want to be with you no more. I do love you and I do care for you, but I'm not in love with you. And I don't want to spend the rest of my life with you. And I don't want to waste your life and I don't want to waste your time. And I would like for you to find someone who fulfills all your needs and fulfill everything that you want in a mate. That's just being mature. That's just being decent. That's just being decent. And then you got some people, I know that, you know, when I was young, I was 18 years old and um, 18 years old and got married. And that was the most, the worst mistake I ever made, listening to other people. Told that I had a child. Child wasn't even my child. He's a great son. He's a great son. I've been in his, his life all his whole life. But... Um, it was the worst thing that ever happened to me. And I tell, that's why I tell young people, don't get married to you in your, in your twenties until your late twenties or mid twenties or late twenties, or even by the time you turn 30, because by that time, you know what you want out of life. You know what you want in a mate. By that time you have grown, you've matured, you know what you want when you're 19, 18, 19 years old, you don't know what you want. You don't know what you want. You have no idea what you want. You think you know, but you don't know. Because trust me, when you're married at 18, 19 years old, one, two, three kids come, that whole dynamic of that relationship getting ready to change. And uh, when them kids come, everything is good. Like I said, everything is rainbows and Skittles and unicorns when you just you two but when them babies come and them kids get 
that pressure, financial pressure, and that pressure of those, the raising those kids, <laughs> that whole dynamic gonna change. And we're gonna see that you're gonna see that marriages work. It is not just give me a ring, say I do, and we just gonna live together forever and be happily ever after. <laughs> no, it's gonna require work. But if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. This is what we do. We talk about real life solutions with Uncle T. We talk about real life stuff. We talk about spiritual stuff. We talk about finances. We talk about relationships. We talk about men issues, women issues. We talk about current events because this is real life stuff. I want to talk about things that's going to help you down the road to help you get through your issue, your situation, and for you to be a better person. But until we talk again, subscribe to my channel. I would love for you guys to put comments in the in the uh, comment section. I would really like to hear from you guys. Check my email out. Send me an email. Got questions? Something you want me to talk about, or you or you if something I may miss and you want me to go back and talk about some things, please send me an email. Until then, you guys be safe. Take care of yourself. I'm gonna enjoy myself out here in the park. They out here playing baseball. I'm gonna check them out. You guys take care. Uncle T is out.